It's a great pleasure to welcome to What's Next, Ashley Smith, who's the Chief Operations Officer at Amoeba TSC, and he leads the digital transformation team and all the initiatives across fiber networks, ISPs, field operations, more than 30 years of experience in telecoms and uh, technical leadership. So he really focuses on driving innovation and automation and sustainable growth using locally developed industry-proven technologies. Uh, welcome to you, Ashley. How are you doing? Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. This is quite a pleasure and an honor to be here with you. As I said, it feels like we're speaking to uh, to internet royalty, so, uh, and it feels like I've known you forever. But thanks for the introduction. And, and uh, uh, to the listeners, uh, thank you for, for having uh, making some time to listen to me as well. Thank you, Ashley. No, the, the honor is mine indeed. Now, Amoeba TSC, uh, tell us who is Amoeba TSC and what do you guys do and where are your key areas of expertise? Tell us a little bit about Amoeba. No, it's a pleasure. Thanks. So, so Amoeba, the genesis of Amoeba, uh, I don't know if you remember a company by the name of Smart Villages. Uh, the owners of that business obviously had lots of learnings in terms of platforms that they tried to import, uh, typically Eurocentric platforms. Uh, which did not work, um, and they had a lot of field issues. And out of that was born uh, Amoeba TSC and the platforms that underpin the Amoeba TSC business. Um, and one of those platforms was um, Agility GIS, and the second one is is Tasker. And really, it was about solving real problems in the field. So Amoeba TSC has morphed into more than just a digital transformations business. It was born out of solving real problems in the field, things like field installations, tracking real-time as builts. Uh, tracking uh, what is happening with your ASBELs in real time and the inventory tracking of that in real time. So because they, they understood the F&O and the ISP business, having pretty much predated the whole boom, the fiber boom, uh, those platforms were infused with the actual learnings, right? And in the process, we actually found that we started to do digital transformation in other customers as well. So while the intention initially wasn't digital transformation, the intention was to solve real in-house problems, and out of that was born a capability that really is entrepreneurial in, in nature. Uh, we, we solve real problems, and 90% and, and of what we do is telco-related, and the other 10 to 15% is about we play in the energy sector, we play in everything that requires a digitally transformative approach. And where the platforms don't exist, we, we actually build them because we have our own software development team in us as well. Wow, it's uh, it's 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 quite an interesting company. Um, very very diverse. Can you give me a, a typical scenario of one of your customers, without naming your customer, and and what you would guys do for that customer? And let's say the customer's identified an issue or they want to solve a problem. Uh, give us a scenario like that. How would Amoeba fit into that equation? Correct. So I think uh, let me let me use the flagship platform, which is Agility GIS, right? Um, which is really your business population or your virtualized service provider platform. But underpinning is that is it's driven both from an FNO-centric perspective, meaning the network operator or the network asset owner. Um, and then there is the IS portion. So I'll, I'll talk about the FNO portion. So we have a, a very large FNO in South Africa that uses the platform. But what we've solved for them is, is automating the service provisioning process. So we use our workforce management tool called Tasker. So one, we capture all of the ASBOs in real time. When the customer installation is completed, we scan the FSAN number and we trigger a process automatically based on the available information and we automatically provision the service. So this is near zero touch, right? And, and we deployed the same system in the US. It's near zero touch, right? So you, you, you solve the problem of ASBOs. You solve the problem of real time knowledge of what is happening. Right, and so you build a digital asset of what has actually happened. So that's how we solved a very manual process with packs of data that would normally be emailed and WhatsApp. These are all done digitally now in real time. That is the FNO side. From an ISP point of view, we automate the entire ISP journey. So if you typically look at everything from LTE, uh, fiber, uh, DSL, all of those kind of services that runs the platform is technology agnostic. We orchestrate services end to end. So it's a complete digital platform uh, for service providers. So we try and differentiate between saying it's an ISP centric. We, we try and talk about digital service providers. So the platform can really dish up any kind of service and orchestrate what that logic should look like. And the way we've built it is putting the power back in the customer's hands. What does that mean? It means the way the platform has been developed allows the customer to create their own customized job flows without requiring our intervention. 
And then, of course, platforms that we obviously need to integrate to is things like your ERP, uh, SMS, Lightways, WhatsApp, Omnichannel. That is not our expertise, but we then integrate into those quite easily. So you, you, you really pro provide quite a bit of automation, a really fluid experience, and you take away a lot of that friction. You know, you mentioned all those steps and all those uh, segments, and there's a lot of friction in between. You guys have basically removed it and made it entirely seamless, which is, uh, which is brilliant. So Amoeba TSC's role in the telco industry is interesting because um, you mentioned some of the segments that you serve. Which segments and markets do, do you serve? And uh, I guess, who, who are your typical clients? So the typical clients will be, from a network operator point of view, a network asset owner would be tower operators, uh, fiber network operators, which is the predominant base that we serve. Um, and there's a lot of tier two and tier three smaller operators, which we serve as well. Um, uh, from, a, from an ISP point of view, you can, you can pick one of the top three ISPs. We, we, we provide the services to them. We also take care of the whole front end light e-commerce journey with our PWA. Uh, which is basically a website um, that will run as an app on your phone. And the reason we got into that space was because we wanted customers to leverage the power of agility. Because typically what would happen, customers would say, well, just give me an API and I'll do the whole feasibility with my WordPress website. You see, guys, but you are missing a big component in the power and the flexibility of the platform. So now anything that is configured in the back end federates its way through to the front end, right? So you you know uh, one FNO will make a change on the on the wholesale product, and you know it just has a ripple effect in the industry, um, and the guys just can't keep up. So we've built in things like auto migrations, um, auto fallback. If the migrations uh, have changed again in a week's time, so that really puts the power back in the customer's hands without having to call us to configure systems and change pricing. So these are pre-planned. We configure it for them, or they configure it themselves, and the system uh, auto migrates those plans accordingly. Okay, so it's it's a it's a it's an amazing system, um, and it's it's interesting that you serve all the top people in the in the telco sector, which is uh, fantastic. Um, can you talk to us about some of your your milestones that you guys have achieved this year? Um, what, what what kind of milestones have you achieved in 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 your particular segment uh, with your clients this year? Well, I think specifically, I think on the FNO side, it's just been about growth now uh, in terms of getting additional customers. I think there's been a lot of stability and uh, consolidation happening in the industry. Uh, so we find a lot of activity happening around the broadband infraco and the uh, broadband infraco wireless uh, Wi-Fi hotspot service. I mean, everyone is building their own, their own type of things. So there's a lot of activity happening around that. But I think by far the, the most significant milestone for us has been around, uh, and it's been about an eight-year journey, is the Saldana Bay Smart City project, right? Um, and specifically... What we've orchestrated there is, is really, I think, world-class. It's not spoken about enough. Uh, we've managed to, with, with a strategic partner, I think you know who that is, to deploy fiber to almost every home uh, in the municipal, municipal area across five towns. And that was done in, over, in just under a year. Right? Now, why is that significant? Because the, the genesis of that was to say, how do we equip the municipalities to, one, be able to traverse their services over a, a broadband network that is fiber-based, um, but also allows them to become a smart city. So there's two ways you can look at the smart city. The one is it's a greenfield. We build from scratch. And when I talk about smart, is, smart cities, I'm speaking about municipalities, one, but also new development. So we play in both spaces. And in Saldana specifically, we, we deployed fireproof of technology projects focusing on smart metering and involved with a couple of players around the RT29, um, where we showcase how to actually traverse the data across the fiber network. Now, technology-wise, that sounds sexy, but there's practical consideration. So we end up with a hybrid of the two, which has concentrators uh, in the field um, so that we can pick up the, that data. Now, that worked flawlessly. It worked quite well. And then the next step is we use the agility as a service orchestrator, the same platform that we deployed in, in the telco space. The genesis of that or the mechanics of that, we then leverage that as a service orchestration platform to now apply the same logic. So we've done smart security where we, uh, we traverse all of that data and we use AI in the cloud with our partners to actually track what is happening in the field. And I think when we deployed that within the first month, we picked up something like 250 suspect vehicles, right? So there's a lot, a lot of these proof of technologies and we, we call them proof of technology because we know the tech works. So the idea is really to show the benefit before and after having a broadband network 
that traverses all of your value added services. And, and that by far has been a significant milestone in terms of what we've been busy with for the last few years. And then we're busy with a couple of other projects um, uh, where we consult and help the municipality to kind of make the right choices to get to that point. Listen, the, the Soldana Bay Smart City one is such an interesting project. It's kind of a uh, almost like a flagship of how things should be done uh, in our country. Uh, how did this project start out of interest and what were its core objectives when you guys took it on? So I've been with Amoeba for about three years, um, but I, I have been engaged with them prior to this on this particular project. So the project probably started about 10 years ago. So it's been a, quite a long haul. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, at the boom time of fiber, everyone was requesting way loops. And we were saying, but the problem, guys, is you're destroying infrastructure in the process. And we started engaging the municipality to say, well, you're giving away your, your, your way leaves. You're giving away that right, okay? And you're having to keep repeat spending on fixing your infrastructure. So why don't we look at a, let's call it a highway. We build this, you control it in, in, in a sense. Um, and then you can start building your value-added services. So we build it properly from the ground up. And the reason it takes so long is because obviously, you know, all the regulatory frameworks and things you have to, to jump through. In a new scenario, like a new development, a fairly large development, it's easy. You, you can kind of put down the framework, you can install the fiber, you can build it from the ground up. So this has taken quite, quite, a, quite a long time. And the idea is to get to a point where you can engage with your citizens in the smart city uh, setup. So one of the things that we've deployed is now that we've got the infrastructure, the highway in place, we've deployed uh, what we call the digital citizen, which is an application that allows the citizen to engage the municipality directly. All right, so you can do it right out to the ward. You can raise tickets. You can open tickets and with, with imagery that says, well, here's a bottle, uh, here's a burst water pipe, and the metadata will kind of have all of the, the tagging and, and the information along with that, right? So again, the service orchestration platform then orchestrates that to the different departments. Now, the problem is you have a lot of legacy systems in between. So while we know in the private sector we can do things fairly quickly, uh, we can execute things fairly quickly in terms of uh, building it, showing it works. Uh, one one has got to be uh, cautious around stepping on toes. And so you always got to have this in between. We have to integrate with legacy systems. And that's usually where the inertia comes in. Okay. So, I mean, Ashley, um, you know, as you're talking now, um, I'm thinking, and, and you mentioned this earlier, there's been so many learnings on, you know, how to modernize a city. And you've been in the business for a long time. And you acknowledge the fact that, you know, when, when fiber rollout started happening, there, there were mistakes that many service providers made. And, you know, we've learned how to do things better. When you look at legacy cities, like, you know, big cities like Joburg and, and, and Cape Town and wherever it might be, right? Where they've already got those legacy systems in place. How is it possible to, to take what you've got and modernize it and bring it up to the standard in the same way that you've done Saldana City to say this is best practice, this is the blueprint? Can you take a legacy uh, infrastructure and make it uh, uh, modernize it? Is that possible or do you have to redo everything? So, so if, if, if you wear sales at uh, from a private sector, then you would want to say, listen, let's swap out and replace, right? And I think the practical approach is. The biggest issue is that the people are used to how those systems work and the process behind them. So there's always going to be an interim step where you're going to have to interface with the legacy systems. Uh, you modernize it over time, uh, and typically there are contracts in place. So each, each scenario is different, same as in the private sector. So you don't want to throw out an investment. You don't want to get rid of an investment because we can deploy things fairly quickly, but people are probably the more challenging part because of the change management related to that, right? So, so there's an interim step. If it's greenfield, very easy, right? You, you start with a clean slate, you build it, you train people, and, then, and there you go. Uh, in, in legacy systems, uh, I mean, a lot of these things are still on-prem. And so our, our platforms are cloud-based. And so you've got to understand what the scenario is in each, in, in each department and what is the final outcome. Um, it, it's not going to be an easy task, but we typically take care of that in between the mediation between the different platforms. Um, you know, in the telco sector, there's still a lot of platforms that are using SNMP, right? There's no real REST API, but they spent a lot of money deploying. So you say, well, is it worth our while to build some kind of a mediation layer between the two? And we say, yes, because you want to help your customers. So it's not just always about making the, the biggest profit. It's about what is practical. And then you manage that over time. Okay. 
No, that makes complete sense. Actually, a fascinating organization. Tell us um, what what the future holds for Amoeba TSC. What projects are you guys currently working on? What what does your pipeline look for the next 18 months? Well, as I said, I mean, I think in in Amoeba TSC, I I didn't mention earlier, we are system integrator within the ATC Investments Group. Uh, and we are the prime value-added reseller and systems integrator. So all of our platforms, which we then recall, we, we, we call our toolbox, uh, Agility being one of them, the Tasker Workforce Management app is another one. We do Core Network as a service for smaller ISPs that want to spin up and provide services, and we can do that across any f and um, we, we have uh, professional services that we do consulting from a business analysis point of view. Surprisingly, a lot of customers um, are not equipped to do this properly because that's usually where the wheels come off, right, is... I say I want coffee with milk, and but then you de- deliver something else, right? But nowhere is it specified I want coffee with milk, right? So we, we try and make sure that we're very agile. We get things done very quickly. But usually the wheels come off when you haven't defined uh, what is required. So in terms of where we are going, our platforms are, are maturing. We are starting to roll out um, in the U.S. And, and in Europe as well. So there's, there's nice growth happening there. We get involved primarily today. It's in the telco sector. But Amoeba as a solutions business, we are solving things across different sectors. We, we have a particular customer that wanted dual redundant core networks. So we have two separate core network providers that we manage um, to provide that failover because time is of the essence of them. If they lose a couple of seconds of downtime, they lose a lot of money. So we manage that for them. We orchestrate SD WAN solutions for them. So we are a solutions consulting business. We put together solutions where we use our platforms first, where we don't have that expertise we partner with particular uh, businesses and that becomes part of our partner ecosystem so we don't jump around from one partner to the next for the best price we build an ecosystem of partners and our job is to put together solutions that solves real problems so um, for the next while the focus obviously like everyone else is how do i get ai into my platforms how do i make things a bit more efficient Um, and so there's different layers we've established something called the amoeba foundry and in that we, we incubate new ideas and businesses um, we've done about two or three uh, around AI in, in the business analysis space because the, the, the analysis part of what is required in a functional requirement or a business requirement spec takes too long. So how do we make that quicker so that we can standardize that process? And we spend a bit of time uh, on that as well. But first layer, get AI into our platforms. How do we get AI agents into our support processes? And how do we help customers become a bit more more efficient in the process using our platforms? Fascinating, fascinating. Uh, Ashley Smith, the Chief Operating Officer at Amoeba TSC. Thank you very much for sharing those insights and uh, a, a very interesting business, you know, things that you, you take for granted. But, uh, you know, in a very complex world where you've got different layers in IT, you do need uh, organizations such as yourself to make the situation more fluid and take away that friction and make the experience seamless. Uh, fascinating role that you guys play in the telecoms industry. Ashley, thank you for your time. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, thank you to the listeners as well. Really looking forward to meeting you in person uh, soon one day. Thank you. Likewise.